Oh, um, order, order. Honourable members, we're now moving to the Child Support Amendment Bill. Uh, and the, and we, now move, yeah, we now move to consideration of the Child Support Amendment Bill. The question is that Clause 1 stand part. And the debate on clauses 4 through to 25A and the schedules 1A okay, to 2. One, one. Uh, part 1. Part 1. That's good. Right. Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member Dr David Clark. Mr Chair, this uh, bill represents a lost opportunity to address the well-being of children in vulnerable families. Uh, it's a real disappointment. Labor supported this bill to select committee in the hope that it could be advanced, that it could actually gather some focus, that, it, that the government would be brave enough to step forward and say, we want children to be a priority. Now, we know Labor at the last election uh, took a platform that involved um, having all policy uh, filtered through the, the view of what it would mean for children, to actually say what, does, what, what is a difference we could make for vulnerable children with every policy? How can we make sure that no policy uh, makes children worse off? Well, Mr Chair, this policy certainly does nothing positive for children. It's based on the presumption that we treat children, or we raise children, particularly the vulnerable children, in the same way that they're currently raised. The funding model for this uh, formula that we have it presented in the legislation uh, is based on an understanding of what is currently in place. Mr Chair, it's a lost opportunity because we know that 25 per cent of New Zealand kids are raised in poverty. That's 270,000 children that are currently being raised in poverty. And we also know that in this particular group of vulnerable families, that proportion is likely to be much, much higher. About 133,000 children are uh, dependent on families uh, in difficult situations uh, like this, Mr Chair. So this is a missed opportunity. That is the first thing to say about this bill. Um, we heard that, of course, from a large number of groups who represent the interests of children, from the Auckland Coalition for the Safety of Women and Children, from Child Poverty Action Group, from the Dunedin Community Law Centre, from the Families Commission, from the Human Rights Commission, from the Law Society of New Zealand, from the Office of the Children's Commissioner, from the Equal Justice Project and from Women's Studies Association. Mr Chair, this represents a lost opportunity to raise these vulnerable children in a situation where they're not battling the disadvantage of poverty and so therefore Labor cannot in good conscience uh, continue forward in support of this bill. Mr Chair, in the Select Committee, uh, we raised concerns about this approach. We asked whether the, the legislation that New Zealand had signed up for in the United Nations Convention on Rights of the Child uh, could be um, brought to bear on this, whether we could uh, honour the commitments we made there in this bill, whether the scope of the bill could be broadened. And uh, the advice that we received was, well, we could ask the Minister to broaden the Act to consider the rights of children, to consider children's well-being in this formula more explicitly. And so we put that to the Select Committee. And that uh, debate in the Select Committee uh, was, was a lively one. But ultimately, the government members voted down the opportunity to broaden the Act so that it did explicitly uh, look at the welfare of children. Now, I think that is to the government's shame. This legislation has been consulted on for a very long time, uh, and we see a government that, at least on the surface, uh, wanted to make a difference, wanted to examine the shared care arrangements that we currently have and find a fairer formula. That's the language that's been used. Uh, we dispute that we've actually got to that point, but that was the language used. It was a long process. We thought that given the current Act chugs along and given the view of uh, many of those who submitted that this is no improvement, we could have extended the period for this legislation in order to get it right. It seems a sensible thing to do when uh, time in this chamber is being used for the debate to make sure that we are looking after those vulnerable children, to make sure that this Act uh, is as good as it can be to make sure that those uh, vulnerable children's well-being is prioritised. Mr. Mr Chair, there was a second opportunity when, when some concerns were raised about the legality uh, and the potential litigation that might arise from taking such a step uh, to get some advice. And so um, we sought for further uh, advice on how we could uh, reference the UNCROC 
obligations as a committee um, to, the, to the objects of that legislation whilst preserving the integrity of the Act and reducing, uh, making sure that there were no um, litigation opportunities. And again, we put that to the vote and the government members blocked it. They simply did not want the rights of children explicitly noted in this legislation. And you can check the Select Committee records. These were things that we had discussion on and these were things that were voted down on the Select Committee. And I think that is uh, very much to the government's shame. Because in the Labour Party, we do think that children should be the priority. They represent the future of this country, Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member Dr David Clark. Those children, Mr Chair, are the future of our country. They are the people who will uh, earn wages, that will pay into superannuation schemes, that will keep all of us uh, in our old age and the lifestyle to which we wish to become accustomed. And if these children don't have the opportunities to maximise their potential, they will grow up uh, without realising their potential. And that has an onflow to the rest of society, and we can't afford to have children who do not reach their potential in this country. Uh, quite aside from the, the social concerns that, that sit with this. Because this legislation, let us remind ourselves, is actually about those families who cannot reach uh, a voluntary agreement um, as to how they're going to support their children. This legislation is about families that are in a difficult situation, that are often vulnerable because they have had disagreements. And they find themselves now in a situation where they are forced by the state to adopt a formula as to how that care arrangement will work. So we're talking about a group in society who is in a difficult position. Now, I've already touched on the fact that 25% uh, of New, Ch New Zealand's children are living in poverty and that this, this new formula is modelled on uh, keeping that same uh, proportion going forward. Um, but also, it should be noted that taxpayer support here is actually going to those who are liable more. Uh, so what's happening is this is also going to cost the taxpayer more, even though the children uh, don't get the additional support. So we think that there's a number of things that are wrong in this bill that should be addressed. Um, the government didn't take a view on a pass-on mechanism, which many submitters recommended, as a way of uh, incentivising parents to meet their payments, to make sure that they know that their, parents are going to, th their payments are going to be passed on directly to their children. Uh, the government refused to express a view on that, refused to even really consider that as an option. What we also know, Mr Chair, is that this bill has some real negative implications for women in our society. We know that most of the caring for children uh, in this circumstance is done by women. They are usually the primary caregivers. The, uh, the fathers, more often than not, are those who are the liable parents. And so they are making the financial contributions uh, that, that support the children. And we know that those women in this vulnerable situation are often uh, in situations of poverty and are forced to make trade-offs uh, between buying school uniforms for the children or uh, nutritious clothes, nutritious um, food, or power, uh, pay the power bill for a warm house. So uh, while, while uh, the member at the back says nutritious house and, and mocks the issue, uh, I think this is a very, very serious issue. The fact that women in this vulnerable situation are likely to be worse off, we understand from the modelling the officials have done, uh, is a tragedy. And it's a shame. It could be done better. We think that the 25% shared care threshold is too low. Those who have the children for two days a week do not bear the full proportion of the cost that that represents because during the week the children uh, go to school, they go to the dentist, they go to the doctor and so on. So it's likely that the one who has them in their, as the primary caregiver is meeting all of those bills. The one that has them for two days a week is actually not meeting the majority of costs. So having a 28% reduction uh, as is dictated in the formula seems an unfair way to go. It means that those women largely will be worse off. Mr Chair, there is also a big concern on our part around the transparency of the new formula. The new formula uh, is designed, uh, we are told by the government, to be fairer. It's a more complex formula. It takes more factors into consideration. And on the surface, that might appear to be a good thing. Uh, we, we agree that there is some need to take shared care arrangements into account. We, we don't quibble with that. The, the legislation definitely needs updating. Any, any constituent MP will tell you that through their door some of the more difficult cases that they have to deal with are around the care of children. But the new formula, Mr Chair, is too complex. 
and it is very difficult for affected parties to understand. The IRD itself has acknowledged this, saying that it will have to retrain its staff. It's going to have to pour more of its own budget into that area just to train its own staff to use the formula that is expected to be used in the care of children. Now, we can't expect the parents to immediately understand it. It is, it is opaque. On the committee, we spent many, many hours uh, under the Chair's guidance going over and over how the formula would work, how it would apply to different people. And what we saw was that officials could not immediately answer the question. They had to go back and they had to, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr. I Chair, call the Mr. Chair, Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman.